Good evening. I'm Carmelita Ong, the commentator. Today, as the church celebrates the Feast of the Ascension, we'll hear Jesus sending his disciples out to teach and to baptize all nations. We are fortunate to have with us today Father Augusto Adetola from a rural part of Nigeria to share with us the work of missionaries in the predominantly Muslim area. Although Jesus may not be calling all of us to go out on mission, however, we can all support those who serve in the missions. Our presider this mass is Father Dan with Father Augusto concelebrating. Please stand and let us begin. Our opening song is number 188, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise, number 188. So we gather in prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. I'm very happy that we have with us Father Augustine to celebrate with us and to share the work of the church in other parts of our world. So we're called to be a universal church, a missionary church, and that was uh, Jesus' commandment to us before he ascended back to the Father. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we begin acknowledging any faults and failures and asking the good Lord for his pardon, mercy, and help. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. Glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Let us pray. O God, whose Son today ascended to the heavens as the apostles looked on, grant, we pray, that in accordance with his promise, we may be worthy for him to live with us always on earth, and we with him in heaven. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during the 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized of the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, 
throughout Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, they were looking on. He was lifted up and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood behind them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you people clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to the God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For King of all the earth is God, sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations, God sits upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from this letter of St. Paul's to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your heart be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belong to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is name, and not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him a head 
over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. When Jesus approached and said to them, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, by way of introduction, uh, my name is Father Augustine, and I am from Nigeria. I am here today to talk to you about mission. And what a perfect day to talk about mission on a day that will celebrate the ascension of the Lord. The summary of today's celebration, the solemnity of the ascension, is a reminder that where Jesus has gone, we too shall be there someday. The ascension took place 40 days after the resurrection of Jesus. And the ascension of Jesus is that Jesus went back to where he came from. He went back to his Father in heaven. And that is our hope, too, as Christians. That one day, when our life's journey is finished, we too shall go back to our Heavenly Father the one who sent us into this world in the first place. But before we go back, there is a message for us. And the message is, the, is what we read in the conclusion of today's gospel. Jesus said, go into the world and by making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This mandate is not just for the disciples of Jesus. Rather, it is for all of us who are called Christians, all of us who have been baptized into this fold called Christianity. And so we need to ask ourselves every day, what am I doing to spread the good news? The good news is not just about preaching. It is also about the way and the manner we live our lives. People come to faith not only when they hear us talk, but also by the example we set, by the encouragement we give, 
people get to accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. And so today we are being challenged that as we celebrate the ascension, what are we doing on our own part to spread the good news? And that is why I am here today to tell you what we do back in Nigeria in my diocese. I am from a very rural diocese in Nigeria where the population of the people, we have more Muslims than Christians. In fact, we have about 50% of our population in the part where I come from, they are majorly Muslims. And it is so evident that even in my diocese, the first two bishops we had, they were converts from Muslim, from Islamic religion. And they became Catholics and ended up becoming priests and even becoming bishops in my diocese. Because we are situated in the midst of an Islamic population that is poor and do not have enough for their resources, the Catholic faith needs to come alive. And we are so grateful to the many missionaries who have come to our place and they have established schools, hospitals, and different centers, social centers, so that people can go and be able to receive healing and receive quality education. As a diocese, we still try to continue what the missionaries have started. And that is why we have three major areas that we focus on. The first one has to do with education. In my diocese, we have about 12 schools, 12 elementary schools and high schools, where children have opportunity to go for quality education. It might interest you to note that about 70% of the population of the children in these our schools are not even Catholics. They are majorly Muslims. And we have over 500 of them who enjoy free scholarship. That is, they don't have to pay anything because the parents are poor and they don't even have the money to pay the school fees. But yet, we are able to give them quality education. How did we do this? Through generous support of people like you who support our mission. To train a child in a school year in any Catholic school in my diocese cost us only about $500 for one full year. You could imagine spending one year for a child and paying $500 here in the US. It's probably not possible. But because of our own economy, $500 will be able to train a child for one school year. And we have over 500 of them who look up to us for support every year so that they can have quality education. At times, it is difficult, but we are not afraid to tell our stories because we know when we tell our stories, God will use you to support us. So that is why I'm here today to tell you about this story and what we do. There are many of them who still look up to us for quality education. And we don't have anywhere to turn to except to you so that you can support us and encourage us so that we can continue what we have started. Another thing that we do is in the area of health care. We, we would have heard that many children die yearly from the disease called malaria every year in Africa. In fact, it kills more people even than COVID. But in our Catholic hospitals, we give free health care for children between the ages of one till 12, so far as they are coming to treat malaria. And to treat a child from malaria costs us about $800. And we have been able to treat and to be able to save many children due to the help of God and your support. And that is why I'm also here today to tell you about these things so that you could find a way of supporting this mission that we do. Your donation will go a long way to help us to continue what we have started. The third point is in the areas of vocations to the priesthood and religious life. There are lots of young men in my country who aspire to become priests, but yet we can't train all of them because it's quite expensive to train a priest 
To train a seminarian for one year costs us about $1,000. And we have so many of them who want to become. But the diocese cannot take them because it is too expensive. But when we get support and when we get help, we are able to train and then we send them out on mission. We have lots of them already in different parts of the world who continue to preach and to celebrate Mass. Dear friends in Christ, this mission is for all of us. I am doing my own part as a priest, preaching and talking about it. You too, you can support us through your donations and your support. Your five dollars, your ten, your twenty dollars, your fifty dollars, your hundred dollars will go a long way to put to bring smiles to the faces of the people that we serve. Just imagine if, you are, if I get five persons today who can give me twenty dollars each, at least a child is sure of surviving malaria. If I can get so many persons who could contribute $500 for me, a child is sure of getting quality education for the next one year. Nothing is too small to give. And so there is an envelope on our seat. It is for this mission appeal. Please, let us take that envelope and let us put whatever we have inside it. And be sure it is going to be used strictly for the purpose of mission. In case you are not prepared for it, you can take the envelope home and then bring it back next week and then bring it to the church. If you want to write a check, just write it in the name of the parish of St. Anne and it will definitely get to us and just bring it back to the church. Please, whatever you have, we go a long way to support this mission. And through your donation, you too, you are fulfilling the mandate of going to the whole world making disciples of all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I will conclude this homily with the words of St. Teresa of the Child Jesus. She said, Some go to the mission by giving. Others give to the mission by going. So whether you go or you give, we are all part of the mission. I, as a priest, Father Dan, as a priest, we are all in this mission because we have decided to be priests. You too can go on this mission by giving, by supporting, through your prayers and through your money. Whether I go or you give, all of us, we are part of this one mission of Jesus Christ. So please, look around you, pick up that envelope, and please, try and be generous to us and think of these many children who look up to you. May the Lord bless us and bless his words in our hearts, both now and forevermore. Amen. Let us continue then professing in the one faith that unites all of us as children of God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Almighty Father, because the risen Christ now intercedes for us at your right hand in glory, we confidently place before you these prayers for our world. For the church, 
that she find generous financial support for her missionary outreach and her parish most in need. We pray to the Lord. For the leaders of countries that their commitment to peace and justice steer them from relying on weapons to solve their problems. We pray to the Lord. For victims of human smuggling and sexual trafficking, that they may find release from fear and degradation and safe haven in which to flourish, we pray to the Lord. For nurses and doctors, that they serve in freedom of conscience to save lives and not terminate them, we pray to the Lord. For the sick, especially Joyce Manola, Romulo Rentar, Daniel Linhart, and Charlie Cunningham, that they may be restored to health in mind and body and spirit. We pray to the Lord. For the recently deceased, especially Bishop Patrick McGraw, that he may enter fully in God's presence, we pray to the Lord. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of W.A. Chandasari de Silvia and for the intention of Joe Laguda on his birthday. We pray to the Lord. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. God of mercy, we offer up these prayers to Christ who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. Amen. The song for the preparation of the gifts is number 692, Where My Father Lives, number 692. Place for you will be waiting. 
Pray then, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, whose only begotten Son, our High Priest, is seated ever living at your right hand to intercede for us, grant that we may approach with confidence the throne of grace and there obtain your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and set the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until. Therefore, Holy Fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church, which is in San Francisco, by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our bishop, and the old order of bishops, that in the world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Anne, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. through him, and with him, and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us off to each other with a sign of Christ's peace. Take oh. 
sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The communion song is number 583, Worthy is the Lamb, number 583.
Let us pray. May the gifts we have received from your altar, Lord, kindle in our hearts a longing for the heavenly homeland and cause us to press forward, following in the Savior's footsteps to the place where, for our sake, he entered before us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. We have a few announcements. You may be seated if you like. Our second collection this Sunday is for the missionary work that Father Augustine shared during the homily. You'll find the envelopes in the pews next to you. Thank you for your generosity and support. Ushers, you may now take up the collection. Some t something that's central to our faith as Catholics is the Eucharist. The Archdiocese is putting together a one-day conference called the Eucharistic Congress to help us learn and grow in our faith, especially around this precious topic of our Lord. The theology around the Eucharist is rich and deep, especially understanding it from the Jewish perspective and learning of the miracles that have surrounded it. This conference will take place on the eve of the East of Corpus Christi, Saturday, June 10, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at St. Mary's Cathedral. Registration is required, but the cost is free. If you like to meet there and go over there together by carpool, let us know by calling the office and we can do a group registration. Please see the bulletin for more information. Thanks, Carmelita, and thank you also to uh, Father Augustine for coming to be with us today, and we're very grateful that you shared the work uh, of the missions with us. Um, you know, I was thinking back of how in years past, it was missionaries who would go over to Africa, to Nigeria, and places like that, and so how wonderful to see kind of the full cycle that, you know, priests now there come over here and like Father Emmanuel, who continues to minister to us. So thank you, Father. Thank you for the work of your hands. Oh, I, was, I, also, I would also like to acknowledge Michael and his family, who's back as a, they're typically in Shanghai. I don't know what, what brings them back, but certainly nice to have you singing with us to, again. So. And thank you to our musicians, our servers, lectors, Eucharistic ministers. So thank you all for your ministry. Please stand. And so may the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 189, Go Make of All Disciples, number 189. Go make of all disciples, we hear the call, O Lord, that comes from you, our Father, in your eternal word. Inspire our ways of learning through earnest, fervent prayer, and
Master teacher. 